I'm Lori stone Sertoski, Director of Technology with the Church of the Larger Fellowship. I'm going to show you today how you can use your Twitter account, uh, your smartphone device, and a Periscope app to broadcast events live to your followers. So what you're first going to need is a Twitter account, either your own or your organization's, and then you'll also need a smartphone device or a tablet or other mobile device. I have a Samsung, so I'll be showing you how to do this over Android. So the first thing you need to do is go and download the app. You can go to periscope.tv and I'll put that URL in the blog post below. Or you can just look it up Periscope uh, via either your Google Play Store or your App Store on your iOS device. All right, so let me go ahead and get that downloaded and you can too. So once you have it downloaded, and you'll find this blue icon with a little teardrop and a red circle in it, and that is your Periscope app. So let me just give you a sense of what's going on here in the app. So at the top, you have three icons, a television, a globe, and these, a group of people. So what you need to first do is click on the group of people. You'll find your followers here. You'll probably have none since this is your first time logging in. A new icon shows up to the far right, which looks like one person in a circle. That's going to be where you can tweak your settings. So you can scroll down and find settings toward the bottom and click on it. Here, you can set up your notifications. I have mine all set to silent, but if you want some push notifications turned on, you can just click in this area and decide what kind of notifications you want, what, what the sound or the vibration will look like, and then toggle on and off which particular notifications you want. What's really important is down here at the bottom, make sure you have toggled on the auto save broadcast. So by default, it will be off, it'll be grayed out. You wanna slide that to the right so that you can auto save your broadcast. So once you've got that all set, you can come back out here to your main page and you'll want to come back out one more time, hit clicking that arrow key on the top left, and then come back to the television icon. Make that one active. From here, in your lower right corner, you'll see a red icon with a camera in it. That's where you start your first broadcast. You can click there, and it'll allow you to type in the name of your broadcast, which will also be what gets tweeted out to your followers. So make sure you put any hashtags here that you want to uh, make sure that people following that hashtag can also find your broadcast. The other thing you'll want to do, there's three icons underneath. By default, the Twitter icon is enabled. That means it's bright or white. If it looks like this, like light gray, that means no one will know you're broadcasting. They won't see it on Twitter. So you want to make sure that that is on. You can also decide whether or not you want to share your location. If you hit share location, it will remind you that that is now enabled on your phone. Go ahead and type in your broadcast name. I'm gonna go ahead and type in just a test here with a hashtag, please ignore, because this is live and it will go on. And I'm gonna say start the broadcast. So now I am actually broadcasting. So when you want to be done with broadcasting, all you have to do is slide down from the top and hit stop broadcast. And that's about all there is to it. You, it has been saved to the gallery, and you can then download it from your phone onto your computer or share it out on your own social media. Now, the folks who find your broadcast through Twitter while you're actually going live, they will be able to comment on your broadcast while you are filming. And they will also be able to share love, and you'll see these floaty hearts going up, which helps you to have your broadcast become more popular in the Periscope browsing circles, so people will be able to find you and follow you more. There are some tips that I learned uh, when I was doing this for the first time in August uh, at the one-year commemoration of the uprising in Ferguson. A, your phone only has limited battery power. So if you're gonna be broadcasting for more than, say, 30 to 40 minutes, which a lot of times you will, you'll want to buy a 
portable charging device and keep it with your phone. Number two, uh, there's only so much storage space you have on your phone. So if you're doing a weekend like I was, where I wanted to have multiple broadcast sessions per day for a three day, four day period, I needed to spend a lot of time downloading all of this stuff off of my phone each night when I was pretty tired after being out in the streets and marching all day. What I would suggest is you buy a big SD card for your phone so that you can store as much on there as you can and you have devices set up back at home base that where you can quickly pull that stuff off or even have multiple discs that you can use for a weekend like that. The third thing is for, for filming itself, uh, keep in mind that as you're moving around and marching and walking, your phone will start to jiggle and the people who are watching it may get um, like motion sickness. <laughs> so one of the things I would suggest is that you buy a monopod. A monopod is like a tripod, but it only has one leg, and you can usually use it to stabilize it against something else, possibly your own body, or if you're in a mobile assisted, assisted device like a wheelchair, you can like affix it to the chair. You can then buy a little device like this that your phone can then attach to onto the monopod, and then you have a lot more stability and you reduce camera shake. I got this one, it's called a Mi Photo um, accessory for my monopod, and I was able to buy this one online. I would suggest if you're interested in doing that, consider doing it through Amazon Smiles uh, campaign for Church of a Larger Fellowship, and then some of those proceeds will come back to the CLF. If you have any more questions, you can contact me. I'll put my contact information in the blog post below, but have fun uh, broadcasting your events through your phone for free. Uh, this weekend, there's a lot of activity happening across the nation in the Year Without Tamir uh, movement to raise awareness about the death of a, a young boy in Cleveland, Ohio, Tamir Rice. It's been on the one year anniversary. His family is still calling for justice in that case. Get online, look on Twitter for Year Without Tamir, join an event and broadcast it via Periscope. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.